Hey, hello everyone, it's Michael here. Welcome to the Order Flows Inner Circle Weekly Webinar number 27, Swing Trading, Using Order Flow Imbalances with Swing Trading. Now, you know, if you, most people have heard of the term swing trading, and you know, swing trading is best defined as a short-term style of trading. I personally, I categorize myself as a short-term trader, but not a swing trader. By definition, Swing traders will hold positions for anywhere between an hour to several days. You know, a, a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm a swing trader because they'll hold a position for two to three days or three to five days. But, you know, there's also a lot of intraday swing traders. Um, me, myself, I categorize myself as short-term trader um, where I'll hold a position for as little as possible, um, you know, anywhere for a few seconds, I mean, very rarely for a few seconds, but, you know, up to an hour, um, you know, hour, hour and a half maximum. Um, I consider myself more of a short-term trader, not a swing trader. And, you know, swing traders organize the chart landscape with support and resistance levels to help them determine, you know, when reversals are happening or when breakouts can happen. Whereas, you know, my type of trading is not, you know, even though I deal with reversals and breakouts, I don't necessarily um, categorize my, my charts the way a swing trader will. But I'll show you a little bit later on how swing traders, the swing traders that I know, um, categorize their charts. And one of the reasons why I decided to make this uh, video is because, you know, I've been, I have friends that are swing traders and they also use order flow. And this is something that they shared with me. And, you know, I asked them if it's okay to share with, you know, all you guys. And, you know, they don't have a problem with that. But, um, you know, it just gives you, you know, something to think about on how to use other forms of trading together with order flow. Now, again, you know, I know, I know most people come to order flow because they've already been trading a certain way. And, you know, maybe they're trying to refine their entries or, um, you know, exits, or, you know, they're basically they want to add to their trading knowledge. And, you know, I'm trying to present, you know, different ways that people are using it. So, you know, maybe you have your own way of trading, you know, of, of finding pivot levels, right? I have a friend who, who who makes levels professionally, you know, people subscribe to them, they pay a lot of money for it. And, you know, I've been saying, you know, trying to get them, you know, I want to do an interview with them, and, and we can talk about you know, how his levels and, and order flow, but, um, you know, maybe that in, in a few weeks I can get to that. But, um, you know, again, I wanted you to, to think how you can use order flow in your trading, you know, if you already have your existing way of trading. And again, what I'm going to talk about specifically today is how to combine swing trading and stacked imbalances. Now, I'm sure many of you, there are times you've taken trades based on stacked imbalances only to have it fail like literally as soon as you get long it just goes against you um or you know you get long and you know over the next couple minutes it's just going nowhere then goes against you i know i take them sometimes i, I still take them but um i mean you're never going to know when something is not going to work but if you can combine you know stacked imbalances with another form of analysis you know maybe it will help you pass on trades that have a high percentage of not working out and you know the ability to pass on a trade is just as important as the ability to take a trade um you know one of my my favorite movies is this uh this really stupid movie i'll say stupid it's stupid funny um it's called let it ride you know it's about this inverterate horse racetrack gambler and you know, this whole concept is, you know, you could be walking around lucky and not even know it. Anyway, he has this, he has this, he gets this inside tip, you know, in the first race and goes on. He keeps winning, winning, winning. And then he wants to make a bet. And through some weird circumstances, you know, that prevent him from making the bet, the horse loses, right? And he's like, I won because I didn't get a chance to make my bet. So, you know, passing on trades that sometimes you want to take for whatever reason, you know, if you, if you, you, you don't take it and then it, it doesn't work. You feel like you actually, you, you, you've, you've had a successful bet. Um, you know, that, that's why, you know, people don't understand, you know, for, for some businesses, um, you know, like, you know, big commodity trading firms, you know, the nature of their business is to be in the market no matter what. And, 
just because they don't have a position on doesn't necessarily mean they don't have a position on. You know, by by default, they always have a position on. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, not taking a trade and, you know, but because you can confirm it with something else. Like say you have, you know, this indicator, indicator A, and indicator A says to buy. And, you know, you want to buy, but then you, 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 you use your analysis from whatever form, you know, that, that you've formed. And it says, you know, hey, hold on. You know, it's not setting up properly and you don't take it. Okay. But then the, the trade doesn't work out. You know, to me, you know, as, as goofy as it sounds, that's actually a successful trade because you didn't take the trade that you should have taken and it worked. I, I know people are say, no, that, that's not a successful trade. But you know what? On the mental side, right? The mental side of trading really gets um, put in the back a lot. You know, people don't like to talk about the mental side of trading, but really the, the mental side of trading, I, I think, is at least 50% of the trading equation. You know, um, you know, I, I know people that are fantastic traders, but they can't handle the mental side of it. You know, the, the, I, I know guys that are great trading crude. You know, 50 tick moves, 100 tick moves, no problem. They could get them. But if they have one or two losers to start off the day, you know, that they feel scared. And, you know, instead of, you know, they take the trade, uh, the first sign that it's, it's maybe turning, they get out. You know, they get out early and then the, the market makes its 100 tick move, but they got out at, at 10 ticks. You know, it's, they can't handle that psychological part of it. So, you know, it brings the favorite quote that I, that I love, you know, this is a quote that I've, I remember back, you know, 30 years ago, once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable must be the truth. It's written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He's the guy that wrote the Sherlock Holmes um, series. And, you know, it, it, it's true in trading, right? If you can eliminate certain things, you know, certain trades, because the setup is, you know, it may look like it's a legitimate setup, but it's actually not a, a setup that you should be taking, not a trade you should be taking because, you know, it, your order flow may say, yeah, buy here. But you know what? Based on swing trading, you know, you're running, you buy here, you can be running into a pivot level that the market should be coming off of. So, you know, adding different types of analysis will, will help you eliminate certain trades. And the indicator that I want to talk about, this is something that's found on NinjaTrader. Okay, they have an indicator called swing. And what it does is plot swing high, swing lows. You could adjust its strength. The default level is five. So a low number, you know, like one, two, three, will give you a lot more levels. A higher number, 10, 15, 20, will give you a lot less levels. Me, and in this presentation, I use a, a strength level of three. Now note, I'm gonna show you charts and they're set at three, but it's not going to draw a line, you know, to say this is your swing level um, until at least three bars have formed. I think it's got to be in the fourth bar before it will form. So, you know, what you do is you just go to your Ninja Trader, go inside, click on indicators, find this one. It's kind of hard to see. It's called swing. You know, it's alphabetical, so go to swing. And you know, it is real simple. Strength is five. That's what you're going to change. You can change these plots. So, you know, what I do is, you know, I change it to three and, you know, in case, you know, people like to keep it like my charts, the only other thing I change is how it plots. I use blue steel, um, steel, steel blue, not blue steel, blue steel is from Zoolander, um, dash style, I use a solid, you know, so it's a line, hash, well, and five, so it's big so I can see it. And for the lows, swing lows, I use chocolate. It actually looks like a burnt orange color and same solid hash and five. Okay. So how does it look on a chart? Well, this is how it looks on a bar chart. Okay. And you know, just really quick, right? You have your swing low down here, swing low. I, I wrote this in, it's not going to say these words. I wrote these words in here. So yeah, you swing low, you know, your high, higher high, lower, sorry, higher low than a higher high, you know, again, higher low. So, you know, what swing traders do is, you know, they look for your swing low. They look for a higher high, pull back to the higher low, and then they look for another higher high. Or, you know, your swing high, lower low. Ideally, they'd like to get a lower high, and then, you know, another lower low, lower high, like that. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out. This is a setting of three. If you use a different setting, 
say your setting is set at uh, 10 you know, you might you'll probably won't get like this one or this one or this one you'd have your swing high you'd have it here now again the difference is you know by setting at three after three three bars form or the fourth bar is formed then it'll draw the line so it's not going to just draw the line automatically right it has to have it's got to meet the requirements of however many number of bars so if you set it at 10 this line up here won't appear till after you know 10 bars have formed so that's probably somewhere you know down in here okay which is I mean it's okay I mean the thing is you know you're already starting to make a move off swing high if you're in your 10 bars you're down here you should already recognize this is possibly a swing high anyway but you know you know, said at the 10 it's going to eliminate this one this one this one so it'll just concentrate more on you know the the major swings So, again, you know, with the strength setting of three, a swing high or low will print after three bars. Now, why is that important? Because now you have a way of determining possible support or resistance levels, okay? You know, I always talk about order flow being giving you market generated um, resistance levels. I'm not going to get, you could do your research on um, the Ninja Trader swing indicator, you know, what goes into it. You know, just you could just do it on you know search on Google Ninja Trader swing indicator. Um, I'll just show, show you right here. Let's pull it up here. Whoops. Yeah, you, on the Ninja Trader site, you just go there. You know, they got all the indicators here. This one is swing, and it just tells you, you know, what it's based on. You know. So the strength, right? Number of bars to the left and to the right of the swing point. So that's why if you have a setting of three, it only looks to the three bars before, three bars after, ten bars, ten bars before, ten bars after. And then it sort of gets into the, you know, this, all this other stuff. Um, you know, some of the calculations. So anyway, I mean that that's, you know, again, if if you if you're curious on how it's um, formed. You just go to the Ninja Trader site. That's under the support page, NinjaTrader.com support help guides NT7. And you know, again, why is that important? Is because you know, if you can find clue in the order flow that a reversal can occur off off of that uh, of off that support or resistance level, then you know you have a potential for a low risk entry because. If you have a support or resistance level and you're getting a sign in the order flow to buy, well, you know where to place your stop, right? Yeah, your worst case scenario stop. Now, you know, with imbalances, if the imbalance is not working out, you know where to place it. But at least now you're giving yourself a better chance because you have a sign, a signal with the imbalance off of a swing low or off a swing high. You know, buying imbalance off a swing low is, is going to be pretty good. Uh, selling imbalance off a of swing high is also going to be good. And, you know, again, you could be putting your stop just be behind the swing high or swing low. Or behind the higher high, higher low, lower low, lower high. And, you know, basically with swing traders, you know, what they look for is, you know, a swing low, then a higher high, a higher low, and they're going to look for another higher high. Or they have a swing high, they start looking for the market to go down, they look for a lower low, bounce up to a lower high, and then make a move to a new lower low. The lower low is going to be low, below this lower low that you had earlier. Now, so how can you integrate order flow into swing trading? Well, there's different ways, again, you know, but what I'm going to talk about today is stacked imbalances, right? We all know what stacked imbalances are. This is a stacked buying imbalance. This is a stacked selling imbalance, right? You have three imbalances all on top of each other, right? If buying, you know, you're going to get the green, red, for sales. Okay, that's that that's common knowledge it should be. So one of the problems traders have is taking trades based on stacked imbalances and recognizing when the trade is not working out or when to get out, right? I mean, we all we've all been there, right? We've all taken stacked imbalances and it's just sort of going sideways, going nowhere. And you got to make a decision, what do I do? Do I get out? You know, for me, I said I draw those zones, you know, these 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 zones like this right five price levels and I, I know that after three you know after a move of three bars if it's not working out chances are it's 
probably not going to really work out. Or if you're just hanging around inside there, it's probably not going to be working out. Now, with, you know, with the swing indicator, I'm going to show you how you can add it to your analysis to help you understand when it's not working out and, you know, to help you pull the trigger to get out. Sometimes we don't want to get out. You know, we're, we're in the ready, you had the imbalance, it's five bars in, and it's just sort of hanging around there. And it could go either way after that. You know, if, you know, maybe you're struggling saying, oh, I can't pull, I don't want to get out because, you know, the next bar may go start moving in its favor, you know, which does. Um, it does about as often as it doesn't, you know, but at least having something else there to, to kick you in the butt, say, hey, get out of this trade. You know, it's, it's, you know, it could be worth it to a few of you. And, you know, another problem is traders oftentimes just like to take stacked imbalances no matter what. Um, but there's going to be areas where you probably shouldn't be taking them. And, you know, I'm going to show you again you know, with this indicator how you can not take those trades, right? Just because something says buy, you know, read what's happening in the market that says, okay, maybe I shouldn't buy it here, you know, and then make the decision. I said one of the problems that traders face is, you know, that they 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 don't think. Um, you know, they, they think the computer can be programmed to do all the thinking for them. At the end of the day, you know, you got to do your own thinking. I, I, I mean, you know, the most successful traders, I'll say the most successful, the, the traders that I know that are successful ultimately make their own decisions. Now, that's not to say that all traders know because, you know, there's people that are, can, com can program everything and have it work fine, more power to them. But, you know, the majority of traders, that's the minority. The majority of traders are, are the ones that make the decisions themselves. And so, you know, that's going to bring me to the, the million dollar question. What if I can show you a way to refine which stacked imbalances you should be taking, which stacked imbalances you should be passing on, when to recognize a stacked imbalance is losing its effectiveness, and when to get out of a stacked imbalance trade? You know, that's the million dollar question you know that's for some people that this is the last piece of the trading puzzle um you know i said you know you, you know each week roughly i do i do a presentation on something and you know it's a different thing with order flow now again you know, don't think you have to learn every everything about order flow i mean you know i'm sure there's things about order flow i don't even know i i, I know there's there's things on order flow that i i'll say i don't know but you know, haven't even thought of, you know, in the sense of applying it with other things. You know, I said the guy that does the the work for the Sierra charts, you know, he's big on initial balance and unfinished business. And, you know, he's sort of developed his own way of trading around order flow, initial balance, and unfinished business. Okay. And, you know, that's not my strength. That's his strength. You know, we all have our strengths. So, again, you know, part of the reason why I have this inner circle is to get you guys thinking, you know, what can you, you know, some of this stuff will make no sense to you. You're just going to discard it. That's fine. What I hope to do is, you know, kick, you know, get your brain thinking, you know, for something that clicks with you that is just going to make, you know, total sense. Like, you know, before, you know, when I started in, in the trading business back in the 90s, you know, I was, I, I was like a sponge, you know, I tried to soak up whatever I could. And, you know, things that resonated with me, you know, I worked more on, you know, I spent more time trying to, to learn as much as I could, try to develop it and apply it in real time. Things that, um, you know, I, I didn't make sense to me or whatever, you know, I just discarded, um, you know, like what, you know, okay, like GAN analysis. There's a lot of stuff with GAN, okay? I, I understand parts of it. I don't understand everything. And, you know, the parts, you know, the square of nine and, and things like that is beyond me. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I know guys that, you know, big believers in it. And, you know, they have charts and you know, literally like some, a scene out of a beautiful mind plastered all over the walls. But, you know, for me, I, I uh, that's not me. Um, but there's certain things, you know, like the 45 degree line of GAN or a GAN fan, yeah, I could understand that and, you know, and apply some of that stuff in, in my own trading. You know, you don't have to take everything 100% I do and try to apply it. If it's something that makes sense with you, then you apply it. So, 
let's take a look at the charts. So again, you know, why do imbalances fail? You know, that's a question you, you want to be asking, um, you know, here, well, this one, okay, so here's the blue line, right? The steel blue and the chocolate lines. These are the swing lines. Don't confuse them with these high and low. The high and the low is these normal red lines and the green. Um, well, it's not up here, but, but anyway, um, you know, like here you have the swing low, you got a stacked imbalance here. And then look, the market just goes sideways. Okay. Well, using the swing indicator, you have your swing low here. One, two, three, four. You're going to, this, you know, that's going to print here. So you're thinking, okay, yeah, I can buy it. Right. And then you do. And then it just goes sideways on you. One, two, three, four. You're in here, right? And then the prints, you're in this bar and this, this line prints. Okay. You know that the market's, you know, it's got a swing high right here okay and you know what happens the market comes right back off i'm not saying you know the market is reacting because you have the swing high here well the swing reason you have a swing high here is because of what the market's doing um you know uh, there's another case okay so you know you got your swing you got your stacked imbalance here okay this line doesn't print until you're down here actually and so okay maybe you think well you know maybe i can give it a chance you know we have our swing high here you know, it's, it's, you have your high, high of day is the green line. You have a, um, <laughs> lower, lower low, then a high, lower high, and you start coming down thinking, yeah, okay, I can take this. Well, you get down in here, you know, it's already starting to stall out, right? You have your imbalance, one, two, three, you know, four, then you get this line printing in here. So, you know, hey, okay, you know what, I've got a swing, a swing low here. And then what happens? The market just goes sideways. So, you know, if you're in this trade and it's back here, it trades back inside your zone that you got short in, you know, you could say, okay, you know, maybe I should think about getting out. You know, I mean, that's way before this even prints here or even this prints. Because what you have is you're coming down, you get this imbalance and you're thinking maybe I'm getting short in here or, you know, you're getting in on a pullback in here or even in here. Then you see you got this line forming after you get short on a pullback in here, or even if you got aggressive and got short, you know, somewhere in here or here, then, you know, seeing this line in form when you're in this bar, thinking, you know what, I, I can get out with a, a small loss or a scratch, just get out. Um, uh, what is this one? No one to get out. Uh, I, I got a lot of charts in this presentation, actually. Um, I had to put notes in here. When knowing when to get out is, well, it's part one. So, actually, this is, there's, this is actually this chart here. Um, you know, so that's this part here, right? The, the imbalance stopped, okay? You can see that. That's this area in here. Now, what I want to talk about is this, this part here. So you have your, your swing low here. Okay, this is a uh, <laughs> a higher low um, because you know, on the previous one, this is your, your swing low. Then you got your higher high and then a higher low and you're working your way up. So, you know, you can be confident taking this imbalance. I mean, you're in here already. Again, you know, normally I'm hesitant to want to take imbalances going into highs. But, you know, I, I could feel a little bit of confidence knowing that, hey, you know what? I've got a swing low, a higher high higher low and we're going you know we got up through this level we're going you know on up you know I, again i have this area here you know these higher lows going up which is what you want to see on a, on a market moving up so you take the trade okay then your problem is you're coming into new highs where is this market going to stop you don't know because you know it's new highs you get up here you start going sideways well that's probably a sign to you and, you know, in the fourth bar that you're in sideways, you're, you're drawing the line. It draws the line up there automatically. So, you know, okay, I should probably think about getting out because this could be our, a, a new swing high here. Again, you're realizing when it's not working out, right? Here's your, here's your swing high, right? You got one, two, three, four. And you come into this bar, you got this imbalance thinking, hey, you know what? I've got a swing high. I can get short here. Then it just goes sideways. Um, you know, it ran right into this swing low, 
you know, so what, what can you do? You know, at least it's, you, know, you gave it a shot and, you know, you're happy to get out at, at break even. Why do stacked imbalances fail, right? We always want to know why do these things fail. And, you know, this is probably one of the, the worst feelings in the world is you, you just not even looking at these swing highs. You know, this is the, the worst feeling is you, you take this trade, you sit through this, sit through this, then it moves up and it comes right back down a little bit later. And, you know, you, you, you scratch the trade, right? I say that's the worst feeling. I mean, the worst feeling is you, you bought it in here and you get out down here. I guess I describe this as a, a frustrated feeling, but you know what I want to get at. You know the point is, do you really want to be taking this trade because you know you have a, even though it did work, it did pop up here a couple of points, um, not even, yeah, I guess a couple of points. You know it came right back down. Is yeah, so you have this imbalance, right? And one, two, three, four. You're in this bar. All of a sudden, you print this this swing high line in here. Okay, which is not what you want to see because you know that's telling you that there is a swing high, and then you got to go up against it. I mean, it does in this case, but then it comes right back down pretty quick. So you know, it, it's it's one of those things. You know, do you um, do you want to hold it or not? Now. You know, an, another benefit, I guess, is knowing when to get out, right? Again, you know, you're going into highs. You don't know sometimes when the high is going to stop. But, you know, so here you got your swing low. Well, I say swing low, your your swing. Yeah, I'll just call it a swing low just to keep it simple. Um, you know, it could be a higher low. I'm not talking about what's going on before here. And, but really what I'm keying in on is, is the pivot. You know, I use these swings as actually more towards pivots, I guess, would be a better definition. We we'll call it a pivot low. And okay, so you know, you here in here, your third bar, fourth bar, it draws a line. Hey, you know, I, I, it's worth a shot. You know, it's going in the right direction. I can take it. You know, you take it, it comes up here. Oh my gosh, well, you know, it comes up here. Where do I stop? Well, we haven't formed a pivot high yet. And then you get up here, you know, you're sort of in here. Okay, now I, I, I now then it draws the line. Now you can get out, you know. I mean, rather than sitting here sweating, you know, do I get out? Do I not get out? Um, you know, you could be getting out somewhere in here. Honestly, if it just sort of stalled like that, I'd be looking to get out in here anyway. But, you know, some people don't know. Sometimes, you know, I want to try and squeeze as much out of it as possible, thinking it's going to go up, you know, another couple of points when, you know, it's drawing a, uh, you know, a swing high here, telling you, you know what, you got a swing high here. You might want to think about, uh, about cutting it okay so here you have your swing high come down into this swing low and it just goes not nowhere you know you're one two three four bars in what does it do you get short somewhere in here and it just goes sideways you're in this bar here and you draw this it draws a, a pivot low here okay well just get out i mean yeah okay it did make a, a new low by a tick then just went back up here but you know when as soon as this line prints and you're staring at it, you're in a short position, you know, somewhere in here at uh, 150.10, and you're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and then it just draws this line in here. You know, just uh, you know, get out. You know, maybe you could get out a scratch, maybe a lose a tick, maybe make a tick. Um, you know, at best, you could you could more than easily have gotten out at a scratch, but you. you you know, I mean, why should you fight this? Don't fight against, you know, once those, once those swings, uh, swing highs or swing lows, um, appear. And now I'll get into the, 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 the meat and potatoes, you know, what you want to see, the trades that you want to take. And I think, you know, as you test this out yourself or put it on your charts, you know, have it running all day long, I think you'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised as well um i know i know my my eyes were um when when i first saw it but again it's not a red light green light thing you still got to make the decisions yourself but I, I think you know anything that can help you um make a decision is, is worth it okay so this is what you want note not the stack buying imbalance you don't want this one okay you know this is the first one to appear 
what you want is this one. Now, again, I'll get into the, oh, you have an opposing imbalance, yes. But when you're staring at it here, okay, you have this um, swing low, which actually at that time was the low of the day. Then you get this stack buying imbalance, and you know, normally that's that's very bullish. You know, right off the low, you got your swing low, fourth bar in, you got a buying imbalance. Well, one, two, three, four, all of a sudden in this bar, you're still there, right? You're two bars out, but you're the fourth bar from this swing high, and it draws this line, okay? That's a sign to you that it's not going to work out, probably not going to work out. And then the next bar, you, know, you still have this blue line here because it actually formed earlier, and you get the stacked imbalance, get out, get short, write it down, boom, 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 all the way down to this this swing low. You know, you you would have caught this this you know well before this one happened. Okay, so imbalance is off a high that went sideways and a selling balance off the low. Which should you be taking? Okay, well you be looking to take this one you you shouldn't be looking to take this one you know a you could take b you can't take but you know by the time this one forms it's in here okay fair enough you get short and it's just going nowhere all of a sudden you know one two three four bars in it prints this line you know what it's probably not going to work out because you all of a sudden you form a swing low and then you definitely don't want to be getting short again here because you know you already know you got a swing low Okay, so, you know, it keeps you out of this trade as well. Even though you're in this trade, it tells you to get out. Okay, so, you know, this is off a higher low. So you got your swing low, higher high, higher low. One, two, you know, this lower, higher low doesn't form until, you know, you're up in here. But, again, you know, if you're willing to to take it even though you're a little bit removed from it you can right and it, you get something out of it a couple points there but again you know it, this lower um, higher low isn't going to form until using this again as a setting of three it, again I, two I think is a little too fast five I think is too slow I'm, I'm happy with three you know it's a bit like the Goldilocks syndrome um, but and you could easily have taken this trade, you know, here. And like I said, you know, this is 22.59 ish, 22.59 and a half. You know, that's all the way up to 61 and a half. That's a good two points. Here's one. It's a little bit far away, though, actually. Um, uh, I, I prefer them to get a little bit closer to the swing high or swing low. You know, once it's down in here, it's. it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bars out. Even though it did work, I, I do think it's a little bit too for too far removed. Um, but again, it's it's up to you. A person, I think this is what you want. Something you know within the first, um, you know, the first five, six, seven bars. Here's in the fourth bar. Okay, so you have this again. This line is not going to print until you're in this bar. Uh, but you know what? That's fine because. You're getting short here, you know, either in this bar or this bar. So even if you're getting short here, it's, you know, 75, you know, it's all the way down to 72. You know, again, yes, you have your swing low. Of course, it's not going to print until you're in this bar. But again, you know, it makes that move. Yeah, again, similar. Too much time has passed for me. Um, you know, I prefer to get this imbalance a little bit closer up here rather than way down there. This is what I mean, a little bit closer. Again, this line is not going to print till you're done with this bar, this fourth bar. So you have this imbalance here. You don't know. You don't know yet. Is it going to work? Or not say is it going to work? Is it? Does it have a chance to be successful or not? It's, once you're taking this trade, and you're in this bar and you see this line print up there I think you could safely take it you know your confidence level is going to be a bit higher than than if you don't have this uh, swing you know this pivot high up here yes again but a little bit too far away yes you, know, you got your swing low one two three you know, you're in this bar here, okay, where 
when this line will print. So, you know, it's again, it's setting a three. This line is not going to print automatically. It would be fantastic. You know, honestly, I would throw everything else away if, if, um, as soon as this bar is done, if this line would print, but it doesn't work that way. I got, I got news. I got news for you. Um, you know, was, I remember a long time ago, I had a CQG and I was playing around the other, the indicators that they have. They have this, uh, swing indicator. And I remember looking at it. I said, this was many, many years ago. I was so, so stu not st stupid, more of naive. And it would print like, um, so similar to this, you know, you could, but it would print numbers. Okay. It'd give you like, I don't know if it was an Elliott wave thing or what, but you know, like one, two, threes, it would print. <coughs> and after the fact, you know, you'd see, you know, the one, the two, the three, you know, the waves. And I thought, well, hey, this is it. You know, this is what I'm going to use for for trading and you know so it print one you know two three and i thought oh you know i just get in after the ones but you know it wouldn't print the one two three until until you're trading up here right because the three wouldn't print till after you got you got past the two um so yeah you know, that's why i keep saying you know, it's it's you, for a swing a swing high or swing low it's gotta it's gotta print um three bars at least, you know, if you're using a setting of three, it's got to get through the fourth bar. Now, again, you know, um, go back to this, uh, this chart here. It, it's, it's one of those things where you know, I, I know some people, you know, when, when they first see this indicator, um, you know, with, without knowing how it prints or anything like that, they, they're going to see, well, you know, it's picked every single swing basically and you could set it to a setting of 10 you know or even 20 you know, but a setting of 20 this line up here isn't going to print until you you know you get 20 bars so that would be i don't know what that is 10 you know 20 that'd be down here now okay it's you know, it'd probably print this bar here when you're trading you know back in here is it can you take sh longs and shorts you know on trending markets it looks much better on markets that are kind of going sideways. You know, you see some, show you some, you know, like, uh, what was it? Like in here, you're going to get a lot of bounces back and forth. So if you're thinking you're just going to trade it blindly, um, you know, by the time you, you, you're buying it in here because you got the swing low, but then it comes down and takes out that, you know, your stop would be here, I guess. But then, you know, it comes down in here. And you're thinking, well, you know what, we're below this swing high, you know, this, you have your, um, you're going to think, well, you know, what? I got a level here. I could try and buy it, but you really can't. I mean, it, that's not how swing trading works. I mean, really swing traders, I know, you know, they're, they're swinging, you know, you got your pivot here, you have your high, then you got your, Oh, I, can, I guess I got to make sure I got to think before I say it, because otherwise I'll say the wrong thing and confuse you. So you got your higher, you have your high. Okay. Then you got your, um, lower, low, lower high. And then, you know, what they'll be looking for is, you know, the market to keep going down like this, you know, this would be, um, you know, one, two, three, and you're looking for, you know, four to print somewhere ideally down here. In this case, it does get down here. Then it sort of trades back up in there. So don't be thinking, you know, hey, I could set this at one and just trade every single pivot. I mean, you could, but you know, I, I don't think it'd be very effective in in your in your trading. Um, but anyway, going back to this chart, I mean, you know, on markets that are trending, yeah, it, you know, setting a three or something, you could be literally trading, um, you know, every single swing high. But you don't know when you know markets are going to be trending. Like the other day in the S and P's, we had basically like a seven point range. I think on that day you'd get chopped up a lot. So, so this one, you know, again, you could be fairly confident in taking it. Um, and then look, it just shoots right up. You know, me getting, you know, one bar, two bars, three bars, four, you know, maybe you, know, you can get in you know, somewhere in this bar or this bar. So it's, you know, 84 and a half. <laughs> it just shoots straight up. It blows through this swing high, through the high of the day and on up.
you know, that's what you want, just like this. You know, it's a one minute chart. You know, these other charts I was showing you were, you know, it was a mix. You know, this was a range chart. Some of the other charts were minute charts and other range based charts. And, you know, it'll work on, the analysis will work on any, most any chart. So, you know, one minute chart here, you got this stacked imbalance. Again, it's not going to show this line until you're in the, done with this bar. But you know what? If you can, if you could be fairly confident getting short here, I mean, look at that move, you know, from 55, you know, down into the 20s, even below that. Down here is 18. But um, at least you're tipped off to this move before it happens. You know, then again, you know, this is your imbalance right here, right? Hugging this swing low. Um, you know, this appears, you know, this line will appear here. So you're staring at it. Hey, I got the swing low. I got a stacked imbalance right on the swing low. And it just shoots, you know, up. So if you're getting in, you know, somewhere in here, 24, 25, all the way up to 151 and above, you know, that that's a nice trade. I just want to say part two. Where's the part one? Uh, okay, well, this is the part one. So this is part one here. So part two is up here, right? It's a little bit further away from the low than this one. I said this is the one you want to take, not this one. But again, if, if you're looking to take this, what happens? Nothing. And you run up to this high, one, two, three, four, although by this time, you know, it's, it's a little bit too late when this line prints. I mean, you should have been out already. But, you know, the key is, you know, which one do you rather take? Obviously, you'd rather take this one down here. It's off a of swing low. This is not off a of swing low. This one, honestly, this market's moving too fast. Um, you know, 1201, 1201, 1201, 1201, 1202, 1204. By the time this bar prints, you know, it's, it's over here. You know, over here, yeah, maybe you could have, if you're fast, you could have got it. Must have been not over a day. Was this uh, February eighth? It was a Wednesday. Twelve o'clock. What was it? Uh, maybe I can't remember. Um, not the minutes, but I'm sure there was something. Again, you know, these are the trades that you want, right? You're in your fourth bar. Again, you get this signal. You get the stacked imbalance. You know, one fifty three oh four. Boom! It trades all the way up to sixteen. You know this. You can see, you know, this bar, this chart here, and this chart, you know, similar, very similar. You know, it, it's happening after you put in your swing low. Um, you know, and it's 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 giving you, you know, decent, decent trades, right? Sometimes this happens. You get your stacked imbalance, then you run into a, you know, a swing low in here, and then it makes its move. You know, honestly, if you know, you're getting short off of this. And it just does this on you. Then you get your sign of a, you know, of a lower low. Then, you know, it, it's a support area. You know, you might want to think of getting out. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, the market keeps going down. But again, you know, this is what you want. You know, you got your stacked imbalance in here. You're thinking, okay, but, you know, this line hasn't formed yet. It doesn't form until you're down in here or you know somewhere in here 5345 then it appears okay you know it's a little bit far away actually you know from basically 68 down to uh, 48 you know, that's already 20 ticks but you know if you know if you got the balls it did sell off another um, you know 25 ticks again this is a little bit far away for me though um, you know, this is, 10 minutes has elapsed. It's 10 bars. It's a minute, minute based chart. This is at 912. This is already 923. Yeah, this is the second part of the chart. This is over here. Um, just sort of extended it out. Now, you know, there was, it did continue down actually, but still what I'm looking at is this one here. So you got one, two, three, four. This one just goes sideways on you this time. Um, that's this in here, and see it just goes sideways, and 
one, two, three, four. You know, you're in your fourth bar. This line prints. Okay, he's ah, you know what? It's just this selling the balance not working out. Just cut it. You know, cut it. Don't try and sit here hoping that it's gonna sell off some more. Just cut it. You can see it just went sideways some more. Um, and yeah, it's a small move. Um, you know, one, two, three, four. In here, this line forms. And you're just sort of hanging around in there. Then you get the big move here. You get the stacked imbalance. You know, you're getting short somewhere in here, 53, 75, 76. You know, it trades down to the below 70s, and it just sort of hangs around 70. So it's not the the most awesome move, but you know, it you know, you, you took no heat on it. You know, this is what you like. Um, you know, one, two, three. You know, in here, you're at the low, right? You're coming off the stacked imbalance. You're down here. All of a sudden, boom, you get the line printing up there. You know, hey, I got to swing high. Again, I, I think it's a little bit of a stretch because you did have already a big move. But, again, you know, if you got the balls and, you know, you like to take those chances, I, I think you could be fairly confident in this and, you know, you would have been rewarded. Again, you could... Confidence is, is a major thing, right? So if any chance you can take these trades with more confidence... You know, you got your low of the day here, swing low. It's confirmed when you're in here, um, you know, in this bar. Okay, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's an imbalance off the low, you know, from 84 all the way up to, you know, the, the high 90s. So, again, you know, it's it's those anything that can add confidence to your trading is, you know, is, is worth it. So, you know, the next group of charts is, how to use these levels to tell you when to get out. Okay, so you know, recognizing when the trade's not going anywhere. So, you know, if you're taking this trade here, you know, say you're coming up from lower, and then what happens? You know, you get long somewhere around in here, you know, but then you got one, two, three, four bars, and then you see this line forming in there. You better think, hey, I better get out of this as soon as you can. I mean, I think if you're waiting for this bar to come through here, as soon as this line forms, you know, I'd really be ready to be looking to turn Mama's picture to the wall and, and get out um, in here rather than in here. But, you know, say you get out in this bar, it's better to get out earlier rather than later. And again, you know, you, you're coming up off this low, you're getting along in here. Again, I think it's a little bit far away, but you know what? If you, you were to take it and you get this bar goes nowhere, this bar goes nowhere in this bar by the time this prints here, to me that's already the it's get out. You know, I don't need it to go any further against me. You know, again, similar, you're coming up off the swing low and, you know, one, two, three, four bars, you know, get out. This is very, you know, these charts, you know, look very similar, right? This chart here with this. Is very similar to this chart. I mean, they're, they're different charts, but you know, these patterns, right? You, know, you, you talk about recognizing patterns in the market, and you know, that's why a lot of these charts look alike, is because you know, it, it follows the same structure, the same logic behind it. You know, again, you know, you, you're taking this, this short off of this, this line from earlier. Again, I, I think it's a little bit farther off, but. You know, you're getting short in here, thinking maybe we can make new lows. And what happens is it just starts going against you. You know, you're here, and then all of a sudden this line prints, just get out. You know, again, this is the line. It's hard to see, but it's right here, right along the bottom, um, just above the, the delta numbers. You got this imbalance here. If you're getting long in here, I do think it's a little further away, but you know what? I still want to show it. Say you don't care that it's a little bit far away and you get long in here because maybe this is the low of the day or something and you're looking for a reason to buy and you do buy and you get long here and you get, you know, one, two, three, four. You're in this bar and all of a sudden this line prints up here and you just, you look back and say, hey, you know what, I haven't been able to get past this line. I'll just get out. And, you know, if say you don't get out here, say you get out here, you lose two or three ticks. You know, that, that's That's fine. Um, as you can see it's not working out because you got a resistance level up there. Again, um, similar. 
you know, you're, you're coming up here. I don't know where the swing low was, but you know, again, I just want to show you. You're coming up here. You got a stacked imbalance, so you're behind it in this bar here. You know, you do go higher, and then you just sort of going sideways. You form a swing high up here. Okay, get out. You know, there's nobody putting a gun to your head saying, oh, you got to stay in until the trade stops you out or, um, you know, goes to your profit target when it's when it's not working out. That's, you know, that's the sign for you. And, you know, again, you know, you could use these levels as well, um, knowing when to get out or doing other things. You know, now I'm going to show you, ask you some questions. You know, would you take this trade? You got your swing low here. All of a sudden you got a stacked imbalance. Stack selling imbalance. Okay, it's a stack selling imbalance off the support line. Would you take it? No, you probably wouldn't take it. And it's a good thing you didn't take it. You know, sometimes it's just going to stall on you just like this. And, you know, you're getting short in here. Boom, boom, boom. It's just going sideways. You know, this line forms while you're in this trade, while you're short. You know, you got a support level and you're short running into a support level. Get out. You know, I mean, yeah, it may work out like that or it may not you know do you want to you know why why put yourself through extra stress you know tr waiting for the market to prove you right or prove you wrong just get out and and save yourself for the next trade um you know it can help you sometimes you don't know when to get out so say you take this short and it starts coming down where do you get out you know you want to look for a level to get out you know if if you see all of a sudden you're you're trading in here you got a swing low okay hey you know i'm short from up here i see a support level coming in here okay i'll get out okay you know it, it, it's a it can help you um you know these are the trades that you want to stay away from and you're going up here you get this stacked imbalance you're thinking okay hey maybe i do i want to take it or not you know then you want to say oh, i'll wait for the next bar then it shoots up like this, but in this bar, it can't get up there. Then it prints this line up here. You, you know, say you have a, a bid in here to buy it, right? Inside this imbalance, it shoots up here, starts coming back down. You see this line form, you cancel your bid. You don't want to touch this trade. And then you see it just, it just comes right off really quick. Again, you know why you know a problem that a lot of people face is get into an imbalance and it goes nowhere right you're all excited you have the swing low you got to buy in stack buying imbalance you're thinking hey this is it we're going to start working our way go back up here and what happens you, you get long in here off this imbalance you know when this line forms so you're thinking okay i can get long you get long what happens it just goes sideways on you by the time you're in this bar, it's already the fifth bar, and it's just not going anywhere. That alone should be telling you to get out. But you're in this bar, all of a sudden this line forms. Okay, fair enough. Time to get out. Just get out. Um, you know, sometimes you know people just need that little extra motivation or that extra push to get out of a trade. And again, you know, why some work, why some don't. You know, you got your swing low. You know. You're in this bar, this line forms in here. Then you see you touch down to that low again. With this line is already formed, right? And you got this, right? You got this nice imbalance. Okay, I, I, I'm willing to take this trade. You know, and it just starts working its way, inching its way back up. You know, it's not, didn't just dramatically shoot up there, you know, uh, 20, 20 ticks immediately. You know, it's, it's working its way up but at least you're positioned on the right side of the market. So to recap, right, with a strength setting of three for that indicator, the swing indicator, a ninja trader, um, it will print after three bars. Okay, now why is it good to use, you know, add on to your charts up is because it's going to help you determine possible traditional support and resistance levels that you can use to lean against in your decision to use stacked imbalances in your trading, right? To help you find hopefully higher percentage stacked imbalances to take than, than not. I mean, I, I went through a boatload of examples of what you should be looking for, what you should be passing on. So hopefully, hopefully some of this will resonate with, with you that, you know, hopefully you can take it. I mean, again, you don't have to use the exact settings that I'm using. Maybe you want a, a higher setting or you want a lower setting. 
um, you know, for my style of trading, three is three is what I like. And again, you know, how to find the indicator? You just go into Ninja Traders under the indicators. Oops, scroll down. It's alphabetical. Look at swing. It's called swing. You, you could just change the strength and you know change whatever you want as far as the plots. Again, this is what I have mine at: steel blue, chocolate. And I have it set to five, so it's you know I like my lines to be big and um, you know big and big and visual. I don't like to have to, to squint my eyes sometimes at that. So uh, anyway, before we go, you know, I want to show you this was uh, the chart in the E minis today. This was um, February twenty third, and this is a setting of three on the swing. Now. Again, you know, on tight trading ranges, right? You're gonna get you, know, you swing highs, swing lows in very, 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 you know, like this. You know, and that's why I say don't necessarily be trying to trade, you know, every swing high or swing low, especially during the uh, slow times of the day. If the market's been in a tight range, where it becomes more effective, you know, again, if again, I, I know there's gonna be people out there that want us. Just throw this indicator up there by by itself, not even use it with, with order flow. Um, you know, I'm just trying to give you a play devil's advocate, and I'm not going to try to turn you off on it because I, I don't want to do that. But notice when the cash opens here, 8:30. You know how you're getting bigger moves, right? So again, you know if if you got the swing low here and you're buying it, you know when it prints, and you know, what happens? It doesn't go up. It just comes down, makes a new lower low. The market, if you have a setting of three, you're going to get more signals. If you set it to ten, it'd probably be this one here and this one here. These two won't probably print, nor this one. Um, but again, you know, if if you got setting of five, it'll be different. You could play around with the settings, to find what you like. Um, you yeah, know, but again, don't don't think that you could just buy. You're going to be buying it here and selling it up here because this line is not going to print until you're trading up here. So if you're getting long up here, thinking, hey, I got to swing low, um, this line is going to print when you're down here. All of a sudden, yeah, you're long in here, but you're wrong. By the time this line prints, it's already against you. Um, I said, you know, when, when the market is moving nicely like this, yeah, it looks great because you're thinking, oh, I could have got short off of this swing high. You know, it's printing in here when you're in this bar. If you got, I think, oh, I got short here. You know, cover back down. Yeah, no, it's it's not going to work. And you you'll understand what I say if you start playing around with this um, indicator a bit. Again, you know, play around with the settings, find what you like. Um, but on on areas where the market's ranging in a tight range, yeah, you know, if you're trying to buy or sell off of each of these by itself, you know, without any order flow analysis, you're going to get chopped up. You know, but when the market's moving freely, yeah, it'll help you pick um, some nice levels. So, anyway, thanks for watching this video. And uh, I've been already working on the next one, which I, I think you guys will enjoy. Um, I don't want to get too into it, but you know, it deals with minus development and you know, how, you know, how, what the market's not doing is just as important to what the market is doing but you know in the next presentation i'll reveal all i'll say reveal all but it, it'll make sense to you um you know i mean one of the biggest things about um you know the reason why people trade is because you know they think well you know i've got the market should do this and if it doesn't do it it's either right or wrong well you know that, that thinking is okay but it's missing something important you know if you think the market should be going up right say you think um you know the, the crop of corn is is very going to be very small you know and every you know based on the supply and demand numbers by the government you know, the crop is small it should be going it should be going up and instead it keeps selling off um the fact that it keeps selling off is very important and you know you have to treat it for for what it is you know um you know there's there's going to be times that the market makes no sense whatsoever i'll say it makes no sense but you know the market's not doing what 
you're expecting it to do. And, you know, that, that's sort of what I'll be talking about in the next presentation. So, you know, the ability to recognize that the market's not doing what it's supposed to do, how you can turn that into, you know, something profitable in your own trading. Um, so I'm, I've already been preparing my notes for it. I, I hope to get it out over the weekend or early as, as early as possible. So, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching this and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.